Welcome to Dave's Daily Crypto Take. Today is Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. Let's take a look at today's charts. At number one, BTC is at $31,088.14, up 5.98%. Ethereum at number two, $1,825.24, up 5.51%. Tether at number three, 99 cents. USD coin number four, $1. BNB at number five, $291.72, up 2.94%. Cardano at number six, 64 cents, up 11.53%. XRP at number seven, 40 cents, up 5.57%. Binance USD, number eight, $1. Solana at number nine, $39.97, up 2.63%. And number 10, Dogecoin at eight cents, up 3.44%. Looks like the uh, crypto fear and greed index. Extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. That could be a buying opportunity. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. So what we got today is extreme fear at 17. Yesterday was extreme fear at 15. Last week was extreme fear at 17. And last month was extreme fear at 11. Let's take a look at our five articles today. Article number one is why nobody knows who created Bitcoin. Article two is all crypto influencers and Web3 project founders exposed. Article three, Link Marines rejoice after Chainlink 2.0 brings a new roadmap and staking. Article number four, why PayPal will finally let you send crypto to external wallets. And last but not least, the main topic today is cryptocurrency meltdown is wake up call for many, including Congress. So before we get into all the articles, just want to say thank you so much to everyone that's been helping me out with Dave's Daily Crypto Take. If you want, you can catch me on Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. And if you're in a YouTube space, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps me out greatly. So let's get into it, everyone. Article number one is why nobody knows who created Bitcoin. For years, many have been debating the true identity of Bitcoin's creditor invented Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008. The website Bitcoin.org went online, and after two months, it unveiled a white paper detailing the concept behind a peer-to-peer electronic cash system via Business Insider. And this document also contained the name of its author, Satoshi Nakamoto, leading most to believe that he was the one and only individual human person responsible for creating the most popular cryptocurrency today. While there are undoubtedly a lot of people in the world who go by that name, there is at least one who is linked to Bitcoin based on his distinct set of skills and background. This is where Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto comes into the picture. Dorian is an elderly Japanese-American man living in Temple City, Arizona, and he is from California. According to Newsweek, Dorian used to be a computer engineer with a knack for numbers and mathematics and also happened to be a quite a superstitious figure, even to his own family. This might make him a possible candidate for the person who invented Bitcoin. That is, until Dorian flat out denied all allegations, stating that he had nothing to do with the tech. In fact, Dorian wrote a statement to clear his name, claiming that allegations have dealt him a great deal of confusion and stress. Claim but not proven. Despite being immortalized in memes as the face behind Bitcoin, Dorian admitted to not having any knowledge of the tech required to create a cryptocurrency in the first place. Sure, his name might have checked out, but that doesn't mean the one who made Bitcoin had to literally go by the name Satoshi Nakamoto. Anyone could have used the name as a pseudonym. One person who did indeed claim to use his name as a pseudonym was Craig Wright, else claiming to be the actual creator of Bitcoin in the process. Wright, an Australian computer scientist, tried proving his claims by attempting to cash out coins using private keys only the real Satoshi Nakamoto would have had access to. At one point, Wright even managed to convince Bitcoin developer Gavin Anderson, someone who was personally handy-picked by Nakamoto to work on the cryptocurrency. However, before Wright was able to show his proof of access, he backed out due to a possible security flaw that he alleged could have exposed him to exploitation and theft. The computer scientist explained that he simply broke and that he did not have the courage to do so. The lack of evidence left doubts on Anderson's mind, who has since expressed the notion that perhaps Nakamoto was hacked instead, losing his private keys in the process. Furthermore, there is also evidence refuting the legitimacy of Wright's so-called private keys, whose ownership could very well be claimed by just about anyone. So, Bitcoin's many-faced creator, 
there are various theories regarding Satoshi Nakamoto's identity, with some speculating that he's just not one person, but multiple entities hiding behind a single name. Musk posted a tweet about an old theory suggesting Satoshi Nakamoto's an amalgamation of tech companies Samsung, Toshiba, Nakamichi, and Motorola. While there's some little evidence supporting that theory, Musk also voiced suspicion of another candidate, cryptographer and computer scientist Nick Zabo. Insider previously reported how Musk felt towards Zabo being responsible for Bitcoin more than anyone else, even crediting his past ideas as influencing the foundational concept of Bitcoin. Musk wasn't alone in making that comparison either, as researchers described the similarities between Zabo's writing style and Nakamoto's Bitcoin white paper to be uncanny. Furthermore, Zabo made a cryptocurrency called BitGold over a decade prior to Bitcoin's creation. Uh, despite being among its pioneers, the cryptographer still consistently denied being the person who made Bitcoin on multiple occasions. Well, does Satoshi Nakamoto exist at all? Well, denials were also made by game developer Hal Finney, another suspected creator of Bitcoin and one of the cryptocurrency's earliest publicly vocal supporters. Analysis by Hulo and Associates on behalf of Forbes seemed to suggest that Finney might very well have been a ghostwriter for Satoshi Nakamoto's white paper. Not only did Finney live close to Dorian Nakamoto, but he was also the first to use Bitcoin next to its creator. However, Finney's email exchange with the supposed Ryo Nakamoto reveals that while he was responsible for its development, he probably didn't write now famous white paper. His son, Jason Finney, said his father was an honest guy, that he would have loved being part of Bitcoin's creation, and that if it were so, he would have haven't had hidden it. Before Finney passed away in 2014, he insisted that he still doesn't know the identity of Bitcoin's creator, according to Business Insider. Perhaps Musk was right all along when he spoke on computer scientist Lex Friedman's podcast, suggesting that there's little significance in trying to unearth Bitcoin's originator. After all, Bitcoin's legacy doesn't have to be tied to a name, but rather it lies in within its future potential and application. There's a good reason why the statue of Satoshi erected in Budapest, Hungary, came with neutral features, as it's supposed to represent the average person. While the search continues for Bitcoin's original creator, the possibility remains that the anonymity of Satoshi Nakamoto was part of a long-term plan from the beginning, aiming to keep the focus on those that hold and use Bitcoin rather than its originator. So there you guys have it. Why nobody knows who created Bitcoin? Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. All right, let's get ahead into article number two. All, all crypto influencers and Web3 project founders exposed? Well, let's take a look. The cryptocurrency market could be heading towards the coldest moments as more drama, tension, and FUDs keep sprouting. In a lengthy thread of tweets, an anonymous Twitter user claimed to have obtained over 100 gigabytes worth of Telegram messages of famous crypto influencers, plotting rugs, sexual assaults, the assassination of project founders, and even scamming retail investors. The Anon plans on releasing this information to the general public in different batches within the coming weeks. A vulnerability in Telegram exp allowed exploiters spy on crypto influencers. The Anon said one of his colleagues discovered a vulnerability on Telegram three years ago, which upon exploiting it enabled them to recreate an invite to access recent images and messages and page overview of any Telegram group of an individual user without having to join the group. With such cases and access, the Anon began monitoring several crypto influencers and investors starting from October 2019 up until May 2022. The Anon claimed to have written a script that downloaded all messages of targeted individuals to a private server. Due to overwhelming messages, the Anon began stepping down to spy on only a selected popular figures and traders. The Anon admitted to profiting from some of the information shared by the crypto influencers and investors, but revealed these individuals also generate financial and social success from SAMs and rug pulls. It felt like a part of it, even though I had no method to interact with them. However, as they got rich, I got rich. I got myself into plenty of VC groups, and soon my entire circle of friends and those I talked to became one and the same, the Anon. The crypto could crash to its doom. 
The size of the Telegram messages collected totaled 137.21 gigabytes. The excerpts shall be released in several batches in the coming weeks, according to the tweets. On June 15th and 30th, Dan intends to release an excerpt of messages from crypto influencers with 800 followers to as many as 1 million followers, conveying racism, homophobia, adultery, and sexual assault of public individuals and members on crypto communities. It will also expose top crypto influencers on Twitter involved in rug pulls and scams between 2019 and February 2022 including those involved in killing and stealing cryptocurrency from individuals. The tweets claim that the creators of projects with coins in a top 200 market capitalization from yield farming projects to stable coins designed their platforms to siphon funds from users and that many influencers had a weird obsession with adultery and gifting their ex-girlfriends with millions of dollars to win them back. The entire file and password will be released to the public on July 7th in a specified cryptocurrency wallet. But how true? The veracity of the claims spurred in the tweets is yet to be confirmed and may not be true. However, such information is capable of wrecking panic and havoc in the cryptocurrency market if eventually proven to be facts. While the motive for revealing such information was conveyed on a surface level, Dan revealed he is dying from an illness and wants to come clean before he leaves. Despite being fully aware that there will be no some confusion, sadness, and anger, and frustration, I am intrigued to see what happens next, but I'll let everyone else decide how to proceed forward. Meanwhile, there are mixed speculations and speculations that the files might possibly be a trap for cryptocurrency users. While responding to the development, Telegram told the blog that the post has all the hallmarks of a hoax and is likely to make gullible people download that steals your private keys. So there you guys have it. What do you guys think about this article? All crypto influencers and Web3 project founders exposed? Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. All right, let's keep on going. Article number three. Link Marines uh, rejoins and rejoices after Chainlink 2.0 brings a new roadmap and staking. So Link price broke its downtrend and rallied to $9 after the developers released a roadmap and announced that Chainlink 2.0 includes token staking. So passive income opportunities are one of the biggest draws in the cryptocurrency ecosystem because it gives investors an easy opportunity to grow their portfolio size regardless of the day-to-day -day price action. The latest token to get a bump in its price after announcing the upcoming implementation of staking is Chainlink, the decentralized Oracle network that provides important off-chain information needed for the proper functioning of smart contracts. Data from Cointelegraph Market Pro and TradingView shows that the since bouncing off of a low of $6.67 on June 4th, the price of Link has increased 35% to hit a daily high of $9 on June 7th. Here's a look at what the new development in the Chainlink ecosystem that could be backing today's price rally could be. Staking Link has been years in the making. The ability to stake Link in has a sought after capability for several years now because Chainlink has consistently been the largest Oracle project in the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem. According to the announcement released by Chainlink, the overarching goal of staking on the network is to give ecosystem participants, including node operators and community members, the ability to increase the security guarantees and user assurances of Oracle services by backing them with staked link tokens. By staking link, the ability for nodes to receive jobs, earn fees on a chain link network will be enhanced while the ecosystem as a whole will benefit from an increase in crypto economic security and user assurances. Staking not only introduces an incentive to provide reliable data, but it allows for a penalty mechanism for underperforming nodes who fail to achieve the goal of consistently generating accurate Oracle reports and delivering them to specific destinations in a timely manner. Greater community participation is another benefit of introducing staking is that it will help encourage a larger amount of chain link community to get directly involved with the network by staking link to support the performance of Oracle networks. Getting more individuals involved with community monitoring directly helps to increase the decentralization of the chain link network and enables a robust reputation system and slashing mechanism. The addition of staking is also expected to increase network adoption over time as new sources of rewards and an increase in the amount of protocol fees that are generated from non-emission-based sources further attracts more participants. 
with POR, the cryptocurrency holdings of a company can be easily audited through an automated process that leverages the transparency of blockchains, smart contracts, and oracles. This real-time auditing of collateral helps to ensure that user funds are protected from unforeseen fractional reserve practices and other fraudulent activity from off-chain custodians. In doing so, POR helps to bring a higher degree of transparency to the crypto ecosystem as a whole, and it addresses some of the biggest complaints about how the current financial system operates. So there you guys have it. What do you guys think about this article? Link Marines Rejoice after chain link 2.0 brings a new roadmap and staking. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. All right. Just want to take the time and a break just to say thank you so much to all my supporters. I know you guys have been helping me out so much by subscribing and sharing my channel with all your friends and family. Again, if they're on Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, they can catch the audio version there. And if they want the video version, YouTube, Dave's Daily Crypto Take, like, share, and subscribe. All right, let's keep on going. Article number four. Why PayPal will finally let you send crypto to external wallets. Payment pro processor PayPal will allow users to transfer the crypto to external wallets and exchanges, according to a statement from Jose Fernandez da Ponte, senior vice president at the company. The new feature was highly demanded by the users, the executive confirmed. Per a report from TechCrunch, the general manager of blockchain, crypto, and digital currencies at PayPal, da Ponte said, this feature was the most demanded from our users since we began offering the purchase of crypto on our platform. In the past, PayPal users were allowed to purchase Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and other cryptocurrencies. Initially, users were only allowed to hold the digital assets as a way to gain exposure to their prices. Eventually, PayPal announced it was going to enable crypto funds to pay for products and services. This crypto checkout feature was the latest step until now in the company's strategy to expand into the digital asset sector. The newest crypto withdrawal feature will provide users with more freedom. However, they will have to pay for any network fees when sending a transaction from their PayPal accounts to external wallets. These transaction fees vary from blockchain to blockchain. On Ethereum, when network congestion is high, a transaction fee can double the original amount, which makes it one of the most expensive blockchains. PayPal to PayPal transfers will remain fee-less for the users, but people would need to complete an additional layer of identity verification. The external withdrawal functionality will be progressively available across the U.S., Fernandez de Ponte added. If users have crypto somewhere else and want to consolidate, they can bring it to PayPal from the external addresses. They can also send crypto to anyone who is in the PayPal system. The executive hinted as this new feature last year, Fernandez de Ponte, as he told TechCrunch, believes the ability to send and receive crypto transactions is a natural step for the platform and an improvement for the users who want to do more with their digital assets. What PayPal's crypto uh, initiative meant for the sector, the payment processor announced its crypto offering back in October 2020. At this time, the news was considered one of the main catalyzers for Bitcoin bull run, which took place and the cryptocurrency from a yearly low at $3,500 to $65,000 in the subsequent months. PayPal letting its users buy, sell, and hold digital assets was the first announcement in a new adoption trend that saw the first publicly traded company in the U.S. integrating BTC into their balance sheet and the world's biggest company adopting it as a payment method. Fernandez de Ponte told TechCrunch that the company wants to serve as a bridge for users to transact between the fiat world and the digital asset world, he said. We see ourselves as a conduit between the fiat or traditional finance and the environment and the Web3 environment. We are enabling connectivity to other wallets, exchanges, and applications. The crypto market also grew to $3 trillion market cap from the PayPal uh, first announced its digital asset service in 2021 when the company launched its crypto checkout service. Lately, the sector has lost over 50% of its value. So, However, Fernandez de Ponte claims the company has long-term plans for the space. This move shows we're in this for the long term. I think it's important to stay the course and continue to invest in the space. There you guys have it. Why PayPal will finally let you send crypto to external wallets. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. All right. Last but not least, the main topic today is 
cryptocurrency meltdown is wake-up call for many, including Congress. Meltdowns in the cryptocurrency space are common, but the latest one really touched some nerves. Novice investors took to online forums to share tales of decimated fortunes and even suicidal despair. Experienced crypto supporters, including one prominent billionaire, were left feeling humbled. When the stablecoin Terra USD imploded last month, an estimated $4 billion in investor funds was erased, and so far there has been little or no accountability. Stablecoins are supposed to be less vulnerable to big swings, thus the name, but Terra suffered a spectacular collapse in a matter of days. The Terra episode publicly exposed a truth long known in the always online crypto community. For every digital currency with staying power like Bitcoin, there have been hundreds of failed or worthless currencies in crypto's short history. So Terra became just the latest coin, the term used by the community to describe coins that faded into obscurity. Terra's quick collapse came just as Bitcoin, the most popular cryptocurrency, was in the midst of a decline that has wiped out nearly half of its value. In a couple of months, the events have served as a vivid reminder that investors, both professionals and the mom and pop variety, can be rolling the dice when it comes to putting money into digital assets. After being mostly hands off towards crypto, it appears that Washington has had enough. On Tuesday, two senators, one Democrat and one Republican, proposed legislation that seeks to build a regulatory framework around the cryptocurrency industry. Other members of Congress are considering more limited legislation. What's surprising, however, is that the cryptocurrency industry is signaling its cooperation. Politicians, crypto enthusiasts, and industry lobbyists all point to last month's collapse of Terra and its token Luna as the possible end of the libertarian experiment in crypto. And stablecoins are typically pegged to a traditional financial instrument like the U.S. dollar and are supposed to the cryptocurrency equivalent of investing in a conservative money market fund. The Terra was not backed by any hard assets. Instead, its founder, Do Kwan, promised that Terra's proprietary algorithm would keep the coin's value pegged to roughly a dollar. Critics of Terra would be attacked on social media by Kwan and his so-called army of lunatics. Kwan's promise turned out to be worthless. A massive selling event caused Terra to break the buck and the collapse in value. Reddit boards dedicated to Terra and Luna were dominated for days by posts referencing the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Terra's ascendance attracted not only retail investors, but also better known cryptocurrency experts. One notable lunatic was billionaire Mike Novogratz, who tattooed his upper arm with the word Luna and a wolf howling at the moon. Novogratz told his followers that the tattoo will be a constant reminder that venture investing requires humility. Michael Estrabilo entrusted that his crypto investments to a stable gains and investment vehicle that he says had assured him that other investors that the funds were secured in USD coin, one of the largest stable coins. Then on May 9th, he said he was informed his money was locked up in Terra. Had I known I was involved in a currency that was backed by an algorithm, I would have never invested in that, Mr. Bilo lamented. Washington may also be waking up to the fact that what used to be niche part of the internet and finance has gone mainstream can no longer be ignored. The total value of crypto assets hit a peak of $2.8 trillion last November. It's now below $1.3 billion. Trillion. According to CoinGecko, surveys show that roughly 16% of adult Americans or 40 million people have invested in cryptocurrencies. Retirement account giant Fidelity Investments now offers crypto as part of a 401k plan. Senator Cory Booker, uh, New Jersey, has repeatedly pointed out that crypto is particularly popular among Black Americans, a community long distrustful of Wall Street. Further, crypto has permeated popular culture. Numerous Super Bowl ads touted crypto. Sports arenas are now named after crypto projects, and the Washington Nationals baseball team took a sponsorship deal from Terra before it collapsed. Celebrities routinely shill crypto on social media, and YouTube personalities generate millions of views talking about the latest crypto idea. Terra's collapse was a bridge too far, it seems. On Tuesday, Senator Kristen Gillibrand from New York and Senator Cynthia Loomis, Wyoming, proposed a framework to start regulating the industry, which would include giving the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, full regulatory jurisdiction over cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and rewriting the tax code to include the crypto. And it would also fully regulate stablecoins for the first time ever. 
This comes after Biden administration working group on financial markets issued a 22-page report last November calling on Congress to pass legislation that would regulate stablecoins. One recommendation includes a requirement that stablecoin issuers become banks that would hold sufficient cash reserves. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has also called for stablecoin regulation, saying we really need a regulatory framework to guard against the risks during a House committee meeting in May. Further, it appears that the cryptocurrency industry, with its libertarian leanings and deep skepticism of Washington, might also be on board. I do think this is a bit of a wake-up call. A lot of people were taken aback by Terra's failure, said Perianne Boring, founder of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, one of the top lobbyists for the cryptocurrency industry. Other crypto lo uh, lobby groups like the Association for Digital Asset Markets have announced support for the Lumens uh, Gillibrand bill. One idea that the Washington seems to be coalescing around is that it entitles that uh, issued stable coins often used as a bridge between traditional finance and the crypto world need to be transparent about the assets backing them and be as liquid as any other instrument playing a key role in finance. Senator Pat Toomey, Pennsylvania, is circulating a separate bill that would require stable coin providers to have a license to operate restrict the type of assets they carry to back those stable coins, as well as be subject to routine auditing to make sure they are complying. So describing Terra as a debacle, Toomey said in an interview that Terra's collapse made it even more important that Washington build some guardrails around stable coins. Toomey is the top Republican on the Senate Banking Committee. It's always difficult to get anything across the goal line in the Senate, but there's nothing politically polarizing about creating a statutory regime for stablecoins, Toomey said. After Terra's collapse, there are two remaining big stablecoins, USD coin issued by the company Circle and Tether created by the Hong Kong-based company Bitfinex. Both hard assets to back their value, but Bitfinex is less transparent about the assets it holds and it is not audited. There are also a host of smaller stablecoin issuers, which in the world of crypto could become the latest hot item overnight. It's not just urgent that Washington step in, it's urgently urgent, said Jeremy Allaire, founder and CEO of Circle, in an interview. So there you guys have it. What do you guys think about this article? Cryptocurrency meltdown is a wake-up call for many, including Congress. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. All right. Let's take a look at the prices one last time before we head out. Bitcoin is at $31,102. Ethereum is at $1,825. Tether, $0.99. Cents. USD coin, $1. PMB, $292. Cardano, $0.64. Cents. XRP, $0.40. Cents. Binance USD, $1. Solana, $40. And last but not least, Dogecoin at $0.08. Cents. So. Thank you so much for making it this far to the podcast and YouTube video. Again, everyone, this is Dave's Daily Crypto Take. Catch me on Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. And if you're in the YouTube space, like, share, and subscribe. Other than that, I hope all of you have a great crypto day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.